The response to the opening sentence is, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. We will, we will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome, welcome to St. Thomas's on this morning. And a special welcome to Alan Murray, our friend. Um, who is reader at St. John's, who is going to open up the word to us today. And as usual, we have some very interesting material coming from the Gospel. So as we prepare our hearts to worship God in word and sacrament, we think back over the past week, and we will make our confession. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. And we say together, glory, glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, 56, verses 1 and 6 to 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and to make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 67. The response to the psalm is, Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Alleluia, alleluia. The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offence when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If one person, blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat, eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus went on to the district of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he didn't answer her at first. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. 
She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to thee, O God. Amen. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it's nice to be here up this end of the church. I'm often on your festivals uh, down in the congregation, but it's lovely to be up here. And today's <coughs> Gospel is a very interesting Gospel, as Pauline said. In Matthew's version, where Jesus, in this section, he breaks with Jewish tradition and law that only Jews may be saved because only then they can carry out the correct ritual practices. Now this, of course, was one of the key issues that also divided the early Christians as they built up their churches from Jerusalem and eventually across the whole Roman Empire. But today's reading from Isaiah, as well as, De as Matthew, showed that these issues had been divisive for Jews for centuries and were still so at the time of Jesus. At the beginning of chapter 15, immediately before today's Gospel, Jesus rebukes those Jews, especially the Pharisees, for hypocrisy, for treating human traditions, such as picking corn on the Sabbath or ritual washing of hands, as though they were God's law. In fact, he uses Isaiah's words, This people worships me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. But as we hear Jesus say in today's Gospel, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. What we eat satisfies our bodily hunger, but it passes through us and the body gets rid of it. But what we speak through our mouths can do good or great harm, as when we are guilty of bad-mouthing or telling lies about our neighbours, or of dishonesty or theft, or sexual transgressions, of violence, even of murder. All these wrongdoings come from our hearts, and what is eating without ritual washing, in comparison to all those. Even though some of us actually, as parents, might have welcomed a bit of God on our side as we tried to get the kids to the sink. This exchange with the disciples, who are still at the stage of being nervous of offending the Pharisees, who were the dominant group uh, within the Galilee of, that, Galilee of that time, leads Jesus to his next encounter on his journey as he meets the Canaanite woman in the district of Tyre and Sidon. She is a Gentile, of course, and has heard Jesus preaching and healing, and she is sufficiently bold, which is quite something for a woman as well as a Gentile, seen as an outcast, she is bold enough to shout out and ask him to heal her daughter, who has mental health issues, is possessed as a demon, as they said in those days. Jesus' Jesus's response is actually one of his most difficult sayings in the Gospel, a 
as he compares Gentiles to dogs. It's not fair to take the children's, children of Israel's food and throw it to the dogs. But she comes back with a brilliant response. Even the dogs get to eat the crumbs from under the table. And it is this great faith that she demonstrates, that Jesus responds to and heals her daughter. Now, this little sequence is, is another aspect of the difficult, difficulty of this story. Is Jesus actually going through a learning process here, himself here? But that's a question for another term. In this sermon, it brings us back to more words from Isaiah. In the first reading, where he says of the foreigners who may come, he says of foreigners who may come to the temple, that those who praise him and love his name, I will bring to my holy mountain. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. And it also brings us to the present day, when many people in this country are railing of our own sort of Gentiles. The foreigners, the migrants and refugees, many of whom have journeyed huge distances to try to reach our shores, fleeing the most appalling wars, violent persecution, even torture. And those who have we have seen on television in recent days, these small numbers, 2,000 there were last year, pay vast sums to get a place on an overloaded boat to seek asylum, to seek a safe place. And what welcome do they get? They're piled into detention centres and our government does everything possible to send them back onto the, into the chaos and danger that they have been fleeing from. So, for today, it is these people to whom Jesus and Isaiah's message is meant for. Come to me and I will offer you a safe place. I will refresh you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God in one age, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified, and the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we welcome Alan Murray from St. John's Park on our preacher's day, and we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church, and for Mark Strange, Primus, and the Bishop of Moray, Ross, and Kate Ness. In this diocese and deanery, we pray for St. Stephen's Canterbury and John Beecham, the vicar, Suzanne Roberts, safeguarding officer, and the manor programme supporting the homeless. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for this world that you've given us as our home. This week, we bring before you the people of Belarus as they protest against the results of recent elections that were neither free nor fair. We ask for your blessing for Svetlana Chikhanovskaya after fleeing the country in response to threats to her children. We ask that the international community are able to deliver an effective response after years of inaction. We remember the peoples of Namibia and Germany as they revisit their shared colonial history, asking that by reappraising the past, a better future may be found. In this country, we pray for those who lost their lives in Aberdeenshire, following a recent train derailment. And we ask your blessings for, on the families and friends of the victims as they grieve for their loved ones. We remember asylum seekers in this country and their dangerous journeys and the lack of access to healthcare on arrival. Lord, in your mercy. In your we remember all those who worship in this church, and especially those with birthdays at this time. Corinne Oyanini, Grace Robinson, Lydia Pinkerton, Dylan Ball, Dante Vito Cruz, and Jeremiah Answer. We pray for our neighbours in this parish, uh, this week remembering our neighbours in Blackstock Mews, and for the Mayor of London and their Assembly members. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for those for whom prayer is asked. Nadira Ali, Elizabeth Makayala. Andrew and family, Davis Makayala, Stella Stavrum, Ted and Elsa, Tony Pantling, Gloria, the Rubinia family, Barbara, Fraser, Sarah and family. Ian McSeveny, Gloria, Jay, Linda, Catalina Rondon, Melissa and Grayson, Chris and Colette Corby, Anne Higgins, and Matt. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We remember the departed. Amongst those who have died recently, we pray for Jeremy Manassas Sherlocker, whose life was taken in a senseless murder. 
in Oxford Street uh, last week. We remember those whom the anniversary of his death is at this time, and in particular, Richard Hollingsworth, Eric Evans, Zbigniew Karowitz, Angela Sinclair, David Tukumar, Barry Nesby, Bent Hjertin, Mark Strutt, Helen Bamba, and Howard Simons. Remember all those who've lost their lives to violence, natural disaster, and for those of no one to pray for them. We bring together the prayers of all, together of all the saints, but especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son, John the Evangelist, and Thomas the Apostle. And we bring our own prayers to you in silence. We say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son. Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. just going to say a word about the Eucharist that we are going to pray and receive. Uh, as most of you already know, uh, maybe all of you, we are only allowed to distribute the bread. So when I come for, uh, and, and I will come to give it from here, and you will be shown around when to come. Um, and we will not speak to each other. So what we are going to do is that when you see me lift up the ciborium with the bread in it and say the body of Christ, that's when you all give a big amen. And then we just carry that amen in our hearts as we give and receive the communion. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, and here is another one. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be your bread. Blessed are you, Lord God.
God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the everlasting Lord. May the Lord Jesus came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. And we is his bread and drink his cup. We proclaim the death of Jesus until we come. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Thomas the Apostle, and all the saints 
to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those who are called to his supper. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin, through Jesus Christ our Lord. seated for the notices. Thank you, Alan, for, for preaching for us today. It was a joy for us. Um, morning prayer on Wednesday morning at nine is beginning again this week. The Bible study is on a summer break, but it is going to start again. The good news is that um, Rowan is starting a new series uh, again on Fridays at 2 p.m., starting on the 4th of September. It will be about the letter to the Colossians, uh, the theme of the supremacy of Christ, and the same conversational um, exploration method uh, as the previous course. Um, when you um, leave uh, the church, you will leave this way, uh, and you as you go out, there is a basket for the retiring collection and you leave your service sheet uh, in the hall. We encourage you, if you want to stop and talk, to do it outside because we're not supposed to be chatting too much here, sad to say. Please stand for the blessing. May the God of all kindness, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.